This is one of Photoshop's most powerful photo manipulation tools, the Perspective Warp. In this tutorial, you will learn how to change the perspective of anything in Photoshop. This is the document that we're going to start with. It contains a background layer and this crate. And as you can see, I've already masked out the crate from its background. By the way, you can disable a layer mask by holding shift and clicking on it. This is what this red X indicates. Of course, you can use the same keyboard shortcut to bring it back. What you need to do now is right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object to work non-destructively. A smart object allows you to come back and make changes at a later point. This icon on the bottom right indicates that your layer is a smart object. Now, go into the edit menu and choose perspective warp. From this workspace, you'll be able to change the perspective of objects in Photoshop and there's two steps. The first step is to create the layout. To do so, click and drag over the create to create this grid. Then use these handles to match the perspective and you can just match the lines on the create to match the perspective. By the way, you can click and drag on a line and you can see how I can distort that. If I hold shift, I'll scale in perspective up and down. The reason that it's not matching is because I didn't do that good of a job matching the lines to my crate. But if I spend a little more time when I drag, you'll see that all these lines will match. So I'm just going to match the edges of the crate as best as I can. You don't have to be too precise, but you do have to get the general perspective in order for this to work. And this looks pretty good. Next, click and drag on the other side to create the other quadrant. Notice that when I hover near the edge, it will highlight in blue. When you release, Photoshop will merge those two edges together and you just have to match the other side. Once you match the perspective on these two points, you can create the third quadrant from the top and the same thing is true. When you drag a new grid, it will highlight in blue release and those two edges will join and you can now focus on this point but all i need to do is drag it to the opposite corner here and again notice how it highlights in blue i'll release it snaps into place so in reality for this third quadrant i only really need to focus on one side which is the far side here so that completes the grid this is the first step to complete the grid the layout now we need to warp it and to warp it we can click on this icon by the way, there's actually keyboard shortcuts that you can use. The L key for layout will switch us over to the layout view and the W key will change us over into warp. So I can switch back and forth by tapping on those keys. And if you're on the layout section, you can tap the enter key on Windows, that's the return key in the Mac, to switch over to warp. But if you're on the warp side and you tap enter one more time, you will apply those changes. And because we're in a smart object, you can see the perspective warp label. When you double click on it, you'll go back into the warp view. Then you can continue distorting the crate by dragging on these points and completely changing the perspective. Also, if I hover over a line, I can hold the shift key and click and Photoshop will straighten that line and join it. So now I can move those two points at the same time. To break that link, just hover over the line again, hold shift and click. And now that link is broken and you can do that with any line. I can do that with this line here. Notice how that straightens the line horizontally now and I can move this accordingly. And by the way, if you're learning something new, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Now, this is not a perspective compositing tutorial, but I do need to explain a few things so you understand why we're making the distortions that we're making. In any scene, you're going to have a ground plane and a sky. The ground plane is where your object is sitting. And if you follow that ground plane all the way to the end, there will eventually be a sky. Wherever that sky and that ground plane meet, that will be your horizon line. This is what this line here is representing. Anything that is above your horizon line, you will be able to see the bottom of it. And if it's below the horizon line, you will be able to see the top. Notice how these boxes that are below the horizon line, we can see the top. And if they're above the horizon line, we can see the bottom. So this is gonna give us an idea of how we're going to composite in our crate into the scene. If we hide the crate for a moment, you can see the ground plane here. This is the street. And if you imagine that there were no buildings, no trees, nothing, just a ground plane, you can see where the sky is. The sky is over here. So without anything here, we could imagine that the horizon line is right about here. 
To place the crate into the scene, we need to make sure that it has a similar perspective. To do so, you can double click on the perspective warp label, then drag on the corner handles to adjust the perspective. And you can hold shift and click on the edges here to straighten those lines. And I'll break the link by holding shift and clicking again. And I can now continue adjusting the crate as needed. When you click on the eye icon, you can see the before and the after. Of course, this composite needs a whole lot more. It needs shadows, color matching, all that fun stuff. But in this tutorial, I want to focus on the perspective warp tool. Now let's use a perspective warp to change the perspective of a room. Always start by converting your layer into a smart object so that you can keep it editable. I'll go into edit and choose perspective warp. I'll zoom out just to have more room to work with. Hold the space bar as you drag to pan and I'm just going to click and drag to create the grid and use the lines already found in the image to align the quadrant to it. I'll drag up like so, use the space bar to pan, do the other side when it highlights in blue, I can release and Photoshop will snap it into place and I can adjust this accordingly. I want to do a good job matching the perspective. In this case, you also want to create a quadrant for the ground so you can start on the right side, release when it highlights in blue, do the same thing on the other side and use the handles to align the perspective. And it may take a little bit of fine tuning to match the perspective. Something else to keep in mind is that the quadrants need to cover the entire photo to avoid weird distortions. When you have something that looks like this, you can tap on the W key to switch over into a warp mode and you can click on this corner handle to rotate the room in perspective. This looks pretty cool. You can see how we're just changing the entire perspective of the room. And of course, you can just click and drag on the other points to better adjust your image. And keep adjusting the perspective warp until you'll have something that looks like this. Commit the changes and click on the eye icon to see the before and the after. As you can see, we completely changed the perspective of the room. To fix the transparent areas, that won't be a big issue. All we will do is use a new layer and enable the clone stamp tool. Hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click to sample. By the way, make sure that all layers is selected. Then align and paint. This looks very good and do the same thing here on the bottom as well. Hold click to sample and paint. Before and after. It's incredible how we can completely change the look and feel of this photo just by making a few adjustments with the perspective warp. You can also use the perspective warp to change the perspective of buildings. Again, right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. Go into edit and choose perspective warp. You can use the same technique we used a moment ago. Select a smaller portion of the building. Then you can hold shift and drag out and notice how the entire perspective matches on this right side of the photo. Then continue to adjust the grid to make sure that it covers all the buildings. Hold the space bar to pan, hold shift and drag up to extend the grid and make any other adjustments the grid requires. Now create a grid on the opposite side. Make sure that it snaps into place and adjust the grid to match the perspective. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be close enough. Now I can tap on the W key and from here I can hold shift, click on the center line and then I can drag and notice how I'm changing the perspective of that street. See that? This is incredible technology. I highly recommend you try it out in your projects. Next, we're going to use the perspective warp to make it seem like that logo is on the floor. To do so, again, I'll right click on the layer and convert it into a smart object. And I'm going to go back into edit perspective warp. And all you're going to do now is just create one grid. Then you can tap on the W key to enter the warp mode. Just use the corner handles to match the perspective in the scene. And you can do so by simply matching the lines of the grid to the lines found in the photo. Remember, you can hold shift and click on a line to join two points together. It will turn yellow and you can drag it accordingly. You can do the same thing on top. And if you need to unlink the lines, you can hold shift and click on them again and continue adjusting the grid until it matches the perspective of the photo. You can hit the enter or return key to commit the changes. And now the logo is on the ground in perspective. Again, we need more work to make this look more realistic. For example, you could change the blending mode to soft light 
and you can use any other blending technique to blend the logo better with the background. Let's now take this technique to the next level and I'll show you how to apply anything in perspective and also convert it into a template. Start by enabling the rectangle tool. From the options bar, make sure that shape is enabled, fill set to black, and then create a rectangle. Then press V to enable the move tool, hold Alt and drag to the side to duplicate. To see the difference, make this second rectangle white, then press Ctrl T to transform and scale it down. Now select both rectangles by holding Shift and clicking on them from the layers panel and duplicate them by pressing Ctrl J. Then move the duplicates to the left side. Now click on the top rectangle, hold Shift and click on the bottom one that will select all rectangles, then right click and convert it into a smart object. This is going to be our template. Then go into Edit and choose Perspective Warp. From here, create a grid that follows each of the rectangles. In this case, we're going to be a bit more precise than we were in the previous examples. But again, you don't have to be pixel perfect. Once you have something that looks like this, you can press the W key on the keyboard to enable the warp mode, then drag on the pins to match the perspective on the steps. This process might take you some time and do try to be as accurate as you can. But remember, we're working with smart objects so you can always come back and make changes. If you're having difficulty seeing the background, you can change the blending mode to color. Then you can continue aligning the grid as best as you can. Once you have something that looks like this, commit the changes by pressing the Enter key on Windows. That's the return key on the Mac. I'll change the blending mode back to normal, and this is the result. Then, if you double click on the Smart Object thumbnail, that will open up the Smart Object in a new tab. Then you can add whatever graphic you like over the squares. I have a texture in my Libraries panel that I'm just going to drag over into this document. I'll scale it and place it over this black square. And commit the changes and I'll duplicate that by holding Alt and dragging it over to the other side. Now when I save this and go back into my working document, you can see how that is applied to the steps. If I change the blending mode to multiply, you can see that the white pixels will disappear and the texture is applied to the steps. Since we're working with a smart object, I can always come in and double click on the perspective warp label and continue to adjust the grid if need be. Something else that you can do is double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. And under the underlying layer blend if option, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to split that in half and create a smooth transition between visible and invisible pixels on the shadows that will make it look more realistic. And you'll see the highlights pop through on this step when I do the same thing on the other side. See how the texture comes out and that looks much, much better. Again, this is a smart object and it's completely editable. You can always add another texture. I have this one here that I'll drag into the canvas, disable any layers covering it, and I will adjust the scale. This looks pretty good. I'll save and go back into our working document. And this is the result.